we can also do something called thermage, which is a uh, radio frequency procedure, but much like a laser procedure. Mm. So if you have a thermage on the neck or the face, you can put thermage on the face, use thermage on the face too. Yes. Uh, what's the downtime? Does it hurt? Thermage, there's absolutely no downtime. It can be done and you can go to a gala ball that night. Really? Yes. So thermage is simply heating up the middle layer of the skin at about two millimeters to a high temperature. So it's a little bit uncomfortable, but not terribly. It'll feel hot. But basically, the skin is co it's colorblind to the skin, so you can do it if you have a tan, if you're a, a, a person of color, and it can be done, and you can carry on with your life. But the evolution of the uh, the end effect takes place over a period of about six months, mm. so it actually changes the collagen and actually stimulates it to form new collagen. So you'll get a firmer and firmer look over a period of about And how six long will that collagen procedure. stay with you as you age? I'd say for most people, they'll see an effect for at least a year or two, and then people will start to notice some laxity mm. of the skin again, and then they can have the procedure repeated again. So depending on what stage in a person's life that person is at. Mm -hmm. If they're in their 50s, they might do it every year in attempts to avoid surgery. Um, if they're 35, they might do it once and be happy for several years. Okay, if someone has had plastic surgery, uh, a, a facelift, can you still use uh, dermal fillers and Botox? Would you bother? Do you have yeah. to? So if absolutely. You want to? So, so plastic surgery still has its place. A traditional facelift has its place. And that's the nice thing about where I work. We have a plastic surgeon there, so where it's appropriate, the patients go to that side. But clearly, even after a facelift, you continue to age. Mm -hmm. It is setting back the clock in a dramatic way. Right. And some people would say, in a way, they don't really want to look. However, there are some people that are desirous of a more dramatic improvement, and so that is an appropriate thing for them. But they're going to continue to age. So Botox, fillers, I've done thermage on a person that was about five years post facelift. She was noticing the skin starting to drape right. a little bit again, and she enjoyed the benefits of having more firm skin. Mm -hmm. So she came, not to have another facelift, but to do a thermage procedure. But to procedure. just tweak, as yes, we call to it. To tweak, yes. We tweak. Step uh, by step. Right. I haven't tweaked yet, but maybe one day. Sure, why not? Probably should tweak. Uh, Tom in his 40s. Let's take a look at okay. Tom. Yes. And I think I'd like to speak to that because traditionally, when we were doing these kinds of procedures, it was the women that sort of led the march ahead to do this and we're seeing more and more men in our clinic um, and Tom is I think in his 40s and he works out at the gym and he eats very well and he's following a healthy lifestyle i.e. but he's beginning to feel like he looks a little bit haggard and so he would like a little bit more change so he again has had a little Botox in the top third of his face to smooth and lift mm. um, the eyebrows and forehead. Well, he definitely looks younger, there's yeah. no question. And I think mainly he doesn't look so tired. He looks healthier mm -hmm. and fresher. So he looks brighter. like he's come back from a, from a holiday. Uh, again, that Tom's been on a holiday with Janet, I think. Uh, what about Laura? Laura's in her 30s. T let's take a look at Laura. Um, so, so this is an age you. group. Yeah, we'll that's get me. to Laura. <laughs> Um, there. So Laura is a very pretty girl. She's younger, as we can see. Mm -hmm. But you're starting to see a little bit of a very negative look uh, on her forehead area, um, particularly between her eyebrows. And she comes in mainly because she doesn't like those lines on her forehead. Right. Her girlfriends don't have that. Mm. And so she's just wanting to keep pace and be a little bit more like her friends. And in the lower part of her face, she's starting to look a little bit drawn. Um, she's got these smile lines appearing, and her, her, her mouth turns down, right. and it's, it's a bit negative. I have a friend who has that. She's just born like that, genetics, and she mm -hmm. said people always think she's grumpy. And yes. She's not grumpy. Yes. It's not her fault. Yes. And she sits like this a yes. lot. You know, oh. so did her grandmother. Well, she doesn't have to that. anymore. So she, as well, has had a little Botox in the top part of her face, and in a, in a smaller dosage, obviously, than the previous two patients that we saw because she right. doesn't need as much no. control of her musculature. If as you have a filler or some yes. Botox in a line, in a forehead line or a line going that way, uh, will your skin stop making the line? I know that sounds like an odd question, yeah. but if you do it at a younger age, at yes. 40, yes. you know, and you still frown, yes. you're always frowning, yes. does it help you not make the groove as, not that we have to think about yeah. that on a daily basis, but... It's hugely preventative. And that's the other beauty of doing this at a, 
at a younger age rather than mm -hmm. older age. So I once met a male dermatologist in California in his 50s, very early on when we were first starting to do Botox. And he used himself as an experiment. So he Botoxed one side of his crow's feet and the other he left to age naturally. And we know that there's a maintenance component to these non-surgical sure. treatments. And so he continued over the course of two or three years to continue to Botox one side of his crow's feet and the other he left to age naturally. Mm. So I even met him at one of these typical medical meetings and uh, he showed me the side that he'd be Botoxing and he didn't look like a Ken doll or anything like that. Yeah. It didn't look artificially smooth. Okay. It had some lining in it when he smiled. Right. And he turned to the other side that had been left to age naturally. So he used himself effectively as a control. Okay, and if you have broken capillaries or blotches or splotches yeah. or discoloration, yeah. you use what? Laser, laser or? Laser, lasers, yeah, lasers. And in a lesser, to a lesser extent, the, uh, the um, uh, skin care, um, which will help correct. Okay. But so getting back to this male dermatologist, he had these, on the side that he left to age naturally, there was these big, thick, deep, mm. furrowed lines. So it was a very interesting uh, experiment, in a sense, for me to sure. see that. And we certainly see it with our patients that they don't, uh, if they're good about maintenance and continue coming to see us intermittently um, for their top-ups, um, they don't get any older. They kind of just right. start looking a little bit better. Well, we like that. Over time. And yeah. we'd like to have Michelle Obama's arms. Apparently she goes to the gym. <laughs> and that's essential. Good health mm -hmm. is, is looking good is partly the gym and what yeah, you eat. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Well, nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Dr. Frances Jang, she's a dermatologist from SkinWorks. And tomorrow, when Mercury goes retrograde, she is the one to dial into. Astrologer Georgia Nichols looks at the stars, the planets, and the possibilities in your astrological chart. And our resident sex therapist and couples counselor, Dr. David McKenzie, returns to talk about conflict in relationships, why fighting is not necessarily always a bad thing. And former figure skater turned Skate Canada CEO William Thompson drops in to update us on the national team's status and training as they gear up to own the podium in 2010. Thanks for watching Studio 4. There will be lots more on Shaw TV, only on Shaw TV.